first it was PC, then you had uh, you know notebooks, and then uh, you had tablet uh, uh, computers, smartphones. What next? I mean, five years from now, what what do you think will be the gadget that will have everybody hooked to, and that Dell will be hopefully making that? Well, you know, my experience in this industry is that. Uh, we can do a pretty good job predicting the underlying technologies and what's happening with physics and semiconductors. How all of that is combined together and mm -hmm. used creatively, and uh, you know, w and 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 what what the real demand is five or ten years from now, it's pretty hard to know. Mm -hmm. One of the beauties of a of a business model like ours, where you have two billion conversations a year with customers, mm -hmm. is. We don't necessarily have to know, you know, <laughs> exactly uh, what consumer preferences are going to be mm -hmm. uh, five years from now because uh, customers are telling us every day, mm -hmm. and our job is to listen to that and to understand, to take all this fundamental knowledge of the the technology itself and then create the right solutions that meet their needs. But it'll continue to to evolve. Well, even as you engage with about 2 lakh customers, uh, a large chunk of the customers these days are younger people. I think uh, the appetite for technology among youngsters has increased significantly over the last uh, 5 or 10 years. Um, how, how do you connect with them? You have a company like Apple which is just seen as this really cool company, mm -hmm. uh, at least by the younger generation. Uh, what, what do you think can Dell do to, you know, in a sense, bring in the wow factor? When you think about the billion and a half PCs that are installed, uh, you know, most of them aren't aren't the brand you mentioned, right? <laughs> There's other other brands, mm -hmm. and uh, you know what what we see in, in our business is social media is a fantastic way to connect with customers. So these two billion conversations, you know, a year will occur certainly in the traditional ways, right? The mm -hmm. face to face, the telephone, the email, the chatting, but now you know it's Facebook and Twitter and mm -hmm. all, all all the the, the new ways. And those are fantastic, you know, venues for us to be able to quickly understand changing consumer demands and consumer habits, and really get a, a window into uh, those evolving requirements. You're on all these, uh, you know, social networking platforms as well yourself, Facebook, Twitter. Have you, in a sense, been uh, taken by surprise by the phenomenal surge in uh, uh, in their popularity and even in their valuations? I've learned not to be surprised, uh, <laughs> but but you know what, what the, the thing I love about these uh, is is that uh, you know they they all run on Dell, right? So so so, <laughs> so you, know, when, 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 you know when, when new new users sign up for Facebook, mm -hmm. you know that that Facebook is is uh, buying more infrastructure. We're learning a lot about what the infrastructure of the future looks like by having to meet those requirements, but. The other thing I'd say is that when, whenever you have hundreds of millions of people starting to do something in a new way, communicate, share, collaborate, you ought to pay attention to that. You know, no matter what business you're in. You know, again, uh, you know, the, the the great new enterprises uh, uh, that, that that are emerging today, whether it's uh, you know a Facebook or a, a Zynga or a Groupon or, or Twitter. Uh, very hard to predict these things, um, and and uh, and and they also can be fairly fickle, you know. And, mm -hmm. and you know what happens in five years? Okay, I'm really excited about that today. Will I w really want to do that, you know, in five years, or will I have moved on to LinkedIn or something else? I'm not really worried. about But it's about also it. tough to value these businesses, isn't it? I mean, the market is giving incredible valuation right now, or at least some companies are. Uh, but how do you value these businesses? Well, that's that's for investors to figure out, you know. <laughs> but you know. but someone is paying top dollar right now. I, again, that, that that's that's uh, that's that's how markets are made. Mm -hmm. But would you, at some stage, look at acquiring some of these companies? And I'm not talking about Facebook, but I'm just saying uh, any uh, of these social ne networking uh, companies, just for a, you know, have that in your portfolio as well. You know, where 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 we're, where we're uh, uh, really focusing our business, it, you know. IT industry is 1.8 trillion dollars, so it's a big space. We don't have to play everywhere. <laughs> Where we're really focused on is how do we provide technology solutions that help our customers grow and thrive. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, there's a, a huge uh, range of solutions uh, around uh, the infrastructure uh, where Dell really has its heritage, and you'll see us continue to expand from there. So things like uh, virtualization and systems management and dealing with the enormous growth in data storage. You know, storage is growing about 
60% a year, and companies need to be able to, to manage that very effectively. So we've made a number of acquisitions, and that you know those are the problems that really every company in the world has, and we're you know right at the tip of the spear in helping them address those. You've also made a few acquisitions, the cloud computing uh, you know part of the business as well. That's critical and that's strategic for you going forward, isn't that? Companies need to be able to you know, uh, get onto the cloud, right? And they want to link their legacy applications to cloud-based applications. And we have acquired tools and built built tools uh, to be able to you know ease that and make it all work effectively. Right. I want to get a quick comment away from all this products and, and technology, but you know, which is a sensitive issue here in India, which is this whole outsourcing backlashes. You're seen as a as a tall leader uh, in the United States of America. When India uh, makes a stronger pitch for uh, uh, you know for more business with U.S., you know, over the last six months or twelve months, there's been a lot of backlash over outsourcing. Uh, what is your own assessment? Do you think, from uh, from a business point of view, it's imperative that there are stronger ties between India and the United States of America? You know, I think that the way our economies work together uh, today, uh, they're, they're really uh, linked in, in an inextricable fashion. Uh -huh. And um, I don't see any uh, backtracking of that. Uh -huh. um, uh, you, know, um, I, you know, I only see them coming together more and more. Uh, now, certainly you can have uh, voices from the extreme on either side that don't really understand <laughs> you know, how that works, so they may be uh, driving one agenda or another, mm -hmm. but the reality is that the, the economies of the world, I think, will continue to be more and more intertwined. You've been quoted as saying that uh, it's an illusion that superstar executives uh, in large companies run everything by themselves. How hands-on are you as a CEO right now? I'm pretty hands-on, but but uh, you know uh, we're a company of 103,000 people, and and so 23,000 uh, in India, uh, exactly, and and uh, growing quite a bit. Uh, so if you, you have any friends that want want to join and they're really talented, <laughs> let us know. You know we're we're hiring. Uh, we've got about you know eight or nine sites all over India, and, and you know we we're looking for the best and brightest, but. Um, you know, you can't run a, a company of 103,000 people from the center. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's there's just no way you can know everything. And so, you know, I spend a lot of my time on strategy and and uh, making sure we have the right talent in place. So our team here in India, they're doing a great job. You know, I don't, I don't have to to tell them what to do. You know, we 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 uh, you know we agree on the strategies, we agree on the goals, and uh, let them go let them go do their magic. But, but can there ever be a Dell without Michael Dell in it? I mean, hands-on as a CEO. I mean, when you were not there, uh, you had to be brought back as well. The board really wanted you back. You think there can be Dell without Michael Dell? I'd like to think that uh, uh, that you know we're building a company that will last well beyond uh, my lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know I think we're absolutely doing that. You know, a lot of very talented people in the company. I think the company uh, will continue to. Do very, very well. The reason I ask you is because of what's happening to Apple. I mean, I think a large section of uh, people fundamentally believe that without Steve Jobs uh, being actively involved, the company would probably not be what it was. So it, it's just, you know, to draw an inference from that. You know, I know about our company, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm having a lot of fun, uh, you know, leading our company. We have a lot of great leaders I inside our business. Uh, every business, uh, you know, has to kind of plan for unexpected, you know, and expected events. Uh, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm a young guy. I think of I can keep doing are. this for, for a long time. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, uh, any founder, uh, and I certainly, you know, have a goal to ha have the business continue to flourish, you know, well beyond uh, my, my lifetime. But as I said, I hope that's a that's long, a bit long, long time from now. Michael Dell, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.